Shalom, shalom. First, give it all praise to the Most High and His Son, Yahweh Shai. Today, class, another body edification. Today, we're going to deal with time management of the righteous. Um, understand this, brother, as we wake up to this truth, we definitely have to focus on programming ourselves and, and building ourselves up on time management, man, as we continue to grow in this walk. Um, time management of the righteous. The one that's going to repent is the Israelites, man, of the 12 tribes and come back to the law, statute, and commandments. We, we definitely will have to focus on time management, man. Setting things back in order. Um, let's start out with the book of Ephesians, chapter 4 and verse 21. the book of Ephesians chapter 4 verse 21 if so be that ye have heard him uh -huh. and have been taught by him uh -huh. as the truth is in Yahweh as the truth in who as the truth is in Yahweh so understand now as we come back into being who we were been called to be which is that chosen seed of the 12 tribes of Israel we got to come back to these things read on that ye put off concerning the former conversation, uh -huh. the old man. So putting off that old man, that sinner that we was in this world, read on. Which is corrupt. Which is what? Which is corrupt. Read on. According to the deceitful lust. Uh -huh. So now we understand now, the way we was living was not the way of the Most High God. We understand these things now. So as we come into this understanding, it's time to put things back in order, Israel. Go ahead and give me Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 13 right quick. Because in the process of doing this, read that right quick, God. This is the book of Ephesians chapter 5, verse 13. Uh-huh. But all things uh -huh. that are reproved. So all things that are reproved, which we know reproved is the element of correction, read. Are made manifest. Are made what? Are made manifest. Read on. By the light. So all the elements of the correction that has taken a toll on the 12 tribes, the ones that have repented, has made have been made manifest by the what? By the light. Read on. For whatsoever you make manifest is light. So what the scripture is saying, so whatsoever pretty much do, Made manifest, that thing about manifest in Israel, ma manifest is the element of being made clear, being put clear in vision or clear in one's mind. So when you're dealing with that light, let's just precept this right quick and give it that in Proverbs 6 and 23 so we won't leave nobody in the, in the, in the, in the dark. Read that when you get there. Uh, this is the book of Proverbs, chapter 6, verse 23. For the commandment is a lamp. So we understand the commandments is that lamp, which we know what that lamp, if you look at the base concept of a lamp, that lamp is used for that guidance. So the scripture is telling us the commandment should be our guidance. Read on. For the commandment is a lamp. Uh-huh. And the law is uh -huh. light. And the law is that light. Read on. And reproofs uh -huh. of instruction. Reproof of instruction. Identifying that blame that leads to that instruction. Read on. Are the way of life. Are the what? Are the way <coughs> of life. So now let's jump back to where we was at now. We have that understanding. Matter of fact, before we go there, give me Psalm 119 and 105 to just bring more understanding to that lamp. Because this where as we do understand, and we've been going through multiple captivities, man, we have lost that foundation of understanding how we should be performing, how we should be walking, and how we should be actually living our day-to-day -day life. <clears throat> Read that right quick, God. This is the book of Psalms, the, uh, chapter 119, verse 105. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet. So now that we know who we are, we understand that the most I got word or a what? Are a lamp unto my feet. Read on. And the light unto my path. And that lamp and the words of the Most High God should be guiding your everyday life, Israel. Should be uh, uh, 
pretty much stirring you in the way of righteousness. Finish it out. That was it. Yeah, that was it. Thank okay. You. So now, knowing that, let's jump back into Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 14 now. book of Ephesians chapter 5 verse 14 wherefore he said uh -huh. awake uh -huh. thou that sleepest so this is understood man for us to awake thou that are sleepest read and arise from the dead and do what and arise from the dead because we understand it's more than one level of being dead which we are speaking towards our nation now the scriptures are addressing the dead pretty much in spirit. Read on. And your house shall, shall give thee light. And that dead in spirit, man, which we know these lights and be commandments, shall give us that guidance. So, <clears throat> just to expound a little more, go ahead and jump over to Ephesians chapter 2, and we'll start at verse 1. Because now that we know that the prophet spoke in similar to, we understand them. They were speaking towards them. Us as being spiritually dead, not being awakened to who we are, not being awakened to that we're the only nation that can actually abide in righteousness. Go ahead and read that up. This is the book of Ephesians, chapter 2, verse 1. Mm -hmm. And you have he quickened. Uh huh. Who were dead. Who were what? Who were dead. That quickened is awakened. Who were dead. Us not knowing our nationality, we was dead. Us not knowing how to live righteous because we've been taught Christianity and all the doctrines of the devil, we were dead. Read on. In trespasses, in trespasses and sins. Uh-huh. Wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world. This is something that we have to really examine, Israel, and it's the truth. In time past, we walked pretty much in the course of this world. Anything that was pretty much done in this world, that's what we were doing as a nation, man. What they used to say, in wrong, do as the wrong. Now we know who we are. We know that that's pretty much the way to see it is death. It's not about where you are uh, as wrong as do as the wrong. Because guess what? Now we know we're not wrong. That's right. And as we now know today, we're not Americans. <laughs> Read on. According to the prince of the power of the air. Uh-huh. The spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. So understand, man, this spirit, man, that work in us is the children of disobedience, read. Among whom also uh -huh. we all had our conversations in times. Uh -huh. yeah, exactly, read on. In the lust of our flesh. In the lust of our flesh, man, we've been trained to pretty much uh, please our, our pleasure and our lust. We've been pretty much taught to please our flesh in this room, in this wicked kingdom. Read on. Fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. Okay. Which you know our mind is corrupt and deceitful of all things. Read. And were by nature the children of wrath. Uh-huh. Even as others. Even as who? Even as others. Read on. But Yahweh, who is rich in mercy. In mercy that goes into that forgiveness. Read. For his great love wherewith he loved us. So this is what's going on, Israel. If we understand this this walking, this concept of being dead, this is what we have to start doing. We have to start setting things back in order. In the process of setting things back in order. Let's go back into Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 15, man. This is the book of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15. See then that ye walk circumspectly, uh -huh. not as fools. So this what's going on. Read that one more time, huh? See then that ye walk circumspectly, uh -huh. not as fools. So when they say, see that we walk circumspectly, this goes into the understanding of Israel, taking strong consideration of all our circumstances. This is what we should be doing. Seeing that we shouldn't be walking in the ways of this world. We should be examining everything. I tell people all the time, even before <clears throat> before in time past, man, when you look at the things we were holding on to, where, where did it get us? Have Christianity ever led, led us to righteousness? Have Christianity ever, ever led us out of this captivity? Have Christianity ever 
fix any problem that, that we've been dealing with. Big Mama still got her legs cut off. <laughs> Grandpa died of a heart attack. I mean, he smoked tobacco, smoked cigarettes, chewed tobacco. All these things we wasn't understanding that we was defiling our temple because this is what we was not doing. We was not going into the concept of taking strong consideration of every aspect and issue that we were dealing with and that we was involved in. That's correct. Finish that out. But as wise. But as what? Wise. Read on. Read, read on. Uh, okay, read on. Redeeming the time. Doing what? Read. Redeeming the time. This is what we're supposed to get into now. Redeeming the time. Play, paying close attention to time. Pretty much savoring the concept of this time. Read. Because the days are evil. Because what? The days are evil. So redeeming the time. Going into observing the management of time, Israel. Of what we should be doing. And how we need to be very cautious of what we do and the time frame that we're allowed to do what we need to do. So, why is that been said? Because the days are evil. Let's go ahead and get a little bit of that on Matthew. Give me Matthew chapter 24 and we and give me verse 12. I think that should dip into what we're looking at because I'm going to share something with you, Israel. We have not been taught the ways of the Most High. And this class here I want to cover some things about time management. It's very important, very important that we seek and, and walk our walk with the Most High in a righteous manner because our days are limited here in the daughter of Babylon. And I'm going to show you why. Read that right quick, guys. This is the book of St. Matthew, chapter 24, verse 12. Uh -huh. And because iniquity uh -huh. shall abound. This is sin, read. The love of many uh, shall wax cold. So the love of many from our nation shall wax cold, man. Shall pretty people heart, which is their mind, should get very cold, man, toward their neighbor, toward their brother. Now, we already know we're dealing with the outside nation, which they already hate us. But the scripture is telling us in this time, when these days should get dark and it more evil, we're going to be dealing with some wicked people, man. Lovers of self. People that love the lust of the flesh, man. That will kill you and destroy you for a pearl of joy. That's right. So when you're looking in, into this, this is what we got to take heed to. I'm going to show you something. Give me 1 John chapter 5 and verse 18 right quick. This is the book of St. John chapter 5 verse 18. Uh-huh. We know that whosoever is born of your house, uh -huh. send it not. So as we wake up, man, as we try to get our life together to walk in righteousness, as we deal with managing how we should be doing what we need to do to get to the kingdom, we need to understand as we come born again, that pretty much we know who are born in the most high. Sin, do what? Sin and send what? it not. Read on. But he that is begotten of Yahweh uh -huh. keepeth himself, uh -huh. and that wicked one toucheth him not. And that wicked one toucheth him not. Pretty much what the scriptures are going in <coughs> and saying, he that is begotten of God keeping himself. Keeping himself, man, is keeping these commandments. Keeping himself is going back to what we were talking about, taking strong consideration of all aspects of this walk, man, of this journey. So in the process of keeping yourself, you keep it in the body and in the will of the Most High God. Read on. And we know that we are of Yahweh. Uh -huh. And the whole world lieth in wickedness. Knowing that we the light upon this earth, man. Knowing that the whole world lieth in wickedness. This is going into the concept for how we got to meditate daily. We got to stay focused in time management, man. All the forces of this wicked kingdom is working against us. So knowing that we cannot be slothful, we cannot be sluggard into being obedient to the Most High God, man. I'm going to show you something right quick. I'm going to sidebar. Give me Daniel <coughs> chapter 7 and verse 25 right quick. Because when you're dealing and trying to be righteous, 
I'm going to share something with you, Israel. You got to learn how to manage your time. Right. You cannot manage your time the same way you manage your time when you was a, when you was a pretty much, uh, I'm going to say, a, 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 a pretty much nigga in this kingdom. Pretty much a byword in this kingdom. Because guess what? There's no rules and regulation of being a byword or being lower than what you've been called to be. Because I'm going to show you, when in the process of time management, how do you deal with time management? And while we should be dealing with time management in a righteous manner, it's simply called this. Read this right quick, huh? This is the book of Daniel, chapter 7, verse 25. Uh -huh. And he shall speak great words against the Most High. Who is this speaking about? This speaking about the pretty much synagogue of Satan. This speaking about the adversary of God. And which, understand, Yahweh Shai at one point called Peter the devil. Anybody that's going against the will of the Most High God, man, this is that individual. He's going to speak what? Speak words against the Most High. Uh huh. Speak great words against the Most High. Uh huh. And shall wear out the saints. And shall do what? And shall wear out the saints. This is what I want you to pay attention to. Underline this. And shall what? And shall wear out the saints. Read on. Of the Most High. How is that going to be done, Israel? I'm going to share something with you. As you waking up to the truth now, time management is going to be very important. Ordering your steps, planning ahead. These are things that I'm going to share you. I'm going to share this with you. We don't understand time management because guess what? We have never been taught war. That's right. So they run pretty much two and two. You cannot have the understanding of time management if you don't have the understanding of order, man. This is the main reason why, as a nation, we got to deal with time management. We got to deal with the order because only way for keeping it getting wore out, you got to do something. We're going to come into that in a minute. But read on. And think to change times and laws. And this is what has been done in multiple captivities. This has happened, read. And they shall be given unto his hand uh -huh. until a time and times and the dividing of time. Oh, for 300, about 350 years, man, this is going to happen, man. So understand, the process of redoing what has been done to us is getting ourselves in order, man. Dealing with the understanding of, of managing our time. Because all the pretty much spiritual wickedness is working against us. I'm going to show you something right now. As we walk this walk, go ahead and give me Luke chapter 22 and verse 31. Because it was very, very uh, vital what Yahweh Shah was addressing to Simon at this time. And he told, he said something to Simon that was very, if, if you understand who you are now, this is Yahweh Shah actually speaking to you now. Read that right quick, God. This is the book of St. Luke, chapter 22, verse 31. Uh -huh. And the Lord said, Simon, uh -huh. Simon, behold. Uh-huh. Satan. Who? Wait, who? Satan. The adversary. Read. Has desired to have you. Uh-huh. That he may sift you as wheat. So, your house shall tell us, Simon, behold, pay attention to what's going on. Be pretty much, let me break it down a little more. Simon, be on top of your game. Israel, we got to get on top of our game. Because the adversary, man, the hater of the most high is coming for us, man. And he say what? Read that again. That they may what? That they may shift you as so long, hold on. Oh, hold on. 22 and 31. 31, yeah. That he may sift you uh, as wheat. So this is going on. Pretty much kill us, cut us off, man. So in the process, this is something you when you read this now, this is speaking to the nation of Israel. This is not just a personal notation to Simon, because guess what? The disciples were walking in righteousness. If you walking in righteousness, guess what? Your house shall speaking to you now, today. So that being said, I'm gonna show you something. Give me Luke uh, 13 and 3 right quick. Because in the process of time management, I'm gonna share something with you. To manage time and to understand the management of time. You gotta change your ways. A lot of times, if you if you're not dealing in righteousness, 
You can manage all you want, but you're going to manage to do wickedness. That's why you have to drift this right quick. Read that right quick, guys. This is the book of St. Luke, chapter 13, verse 3. I tell you, nay, uh -huh. but except ye repent, except you change, man. This is the thing about it. When you're going into this mindset, we have to change, man. Everything we've been taught over here has not pretty much uh, benefited us none at all. Because guess what? It wasn't coming out the oracles of the Most High God. It was coming out pretty much the philosophies of men. Read on. Ye shall all likewise perish. So he's addressing, man. Ye shall all likewise perish. We're going to die, man, and we don't repent and come back to his word. So in the process of this, Israel, let me go somewhere with you. Knowing this, dealing with, I, I want to go into, give me Proverbs, let me sidebar right quick, because I want to show you what we have to understand in this time management. Before you can manage your time, you must correct your mind. You must cleanse your mind. I'm going to show you something. Hold that right quick up. Give me, I'm going to sidebar one more time. Give me uh, Psalm 119 and verse 9 right quick, because I want to build up on this. You must make that change. And when you make that change, this is what have to happen. <clears throat> Read that we get there, huh? This is the book of Psalms, chapter 119, verse 9. Uh-huh. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? So in the process of trying to do better, of trying to time management yourself in the way of righteousness, you got to turn towards righteousness, Israel. You got to turn, because I'm going to tell you like this. We all came from that wicked world, man. And, and yet, we, we, we handle the business, and, and the business that we always handled wasn't always righteous. Right. <laughs> so, read that again up. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? Uh huh. By taking heed there to according to thy word. By taking heed according to thy word, Israel. We got to make sure in the process of leaning towards this, we got to take heed according to thy word. Read on. With my whole heart. With your what? With my whole heart. With your whole mind. Read on. Have I sought thee? Have he what? Sought thee. Read on. Oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. Read that again, huh? Let me not, oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. So when it goes to say, Whole heart have I sought thee. My whole mind, this is what you have to do. You have to seek the elements of righteousness. And they say in the process of doing this, oh, let not, <coughs> it says, oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. So when we understand it, this Israel, we can't stray away from the commandments. Because when you do this, give me Sirach right quick. Sirach chapter 12 and verse 3. Nothing good could come from this. And this, and this precept about to bring this out to you. When you wander away from this, this is what the sinner God wants you to do. This is what the adversary wants you to do. And this is why. Read that right quick, God. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 12, verse 3. There can no good come to him that is always occupied in evil. So when you realize this, man, you have to be walking in the way of the righteous, man, because there's no good going to come from you. Read that again. There can no good come to him that is always occupied in evil, uh -huh. nor to him that giveth no alms. Not invested in the truth, man. I did a class on that a couple weeks ago. So you cannot be dwelling in righteousness, man, and I'm going to say occupied in evil and think you're going to be Dealing and guiding yourself towards righteousness. Or you're not investing in the truth as well. That goes into that all. So that being said, I'm going to show you something, Israel. When we examine ourselves and try to make sure every aspect of our life, we lean it towards obedience, towards righteousness, we got to manage our time wisely. Knowing that being out of order is going to bring that fallenness upon us. I'm going to show you something right quick. Give me Proverbs. Chapter 13 and verse 16, right quick. Because as you look at it, when they tell us to put on the whole armor of the Most High God, man, none of these shall fill us, 
but we got to apply each and every one of them. We can't pick what we want to do. Read that right quick. I, this is the book of Proverbs, chapter 13, verse 16. Uh-huh. Good understanding give it faith. Uh, 13 and 16, uh, Proverbs. You said 13 and 13 and 16. 16. Okay. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 13, verse 16. Uh-huh. Every prudent man. Every what? Every prudent man. Read. Deal it with knowledge. Deal it with knowledge. Let me expand because I don't never leave nobody in the gray area. When you're dealing with the prudent, this is what you have to understand, Israel. The definition of, uh, you know, the base definition of prudent, the ability to govern and discipline <coughs> oneself by use of reason, which we know our use of reason is the commandment. So when you did it in the prudent concept, you did it with the ability to pretty much correct yourself and discipline yourself through the scriptures, man. This is what our people have to understand. Being disciplined with time management is pretty much being obedient towards instruction. It goes hand in hand. Read that again right quick out from the top 16. Every prudent man, every man that's pretty much able to correct and discipline uh, himself, read, deal it with knowledge. Deal it with the commandments of the Most High God, man. Read on. But a fool. But a what? But a fool. An individual that stray away from the commandments. Read. But a fool. Read on. Lay it open his folly. He do what? Lay it open his folly. He don't even consider, man. He just lay it open. It is what it is in his mindset. A fool don't try to have no concept or order or time management. Because a fool is an individual that's disobedient to the Most High God when you right. deal with the 12 tribes. Give me a little more on that. Give me Proverbs 27 and 12. Israel, this is something we got to understand, man. We fighting up. We fighting an uphill battle, man. Uh, uh, we don't have time to play around, man. We've been oppressed for thousands of years, man. We don't have time to play games, man. We're trying to get out this captivity. Yeah. Read that right quick, huh? This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 27, verse 12. A prudent man uh -huh. foreseeth the evil. So understand, which we just read a while ago, the ability to govern and discipline. A prudent man that's dealing with wisdom is dealing with the commandments. So when you're dealing with wisdom, you see evil. You understand evil. Because guess what? You got it yourself towards righteousness. When you deal with righteousness, it's very easy to see evil. That's right. But when you deal with your own vain opinions, when you deal with pretty much leaning to your own understanding, you can be easily deceived, man. Finish that out. Let me read that again. <laughs> Go ahead. A prudent man foreseeth the foreseeth the evil uh -huh. and hide it himself. And do what? And hide it himself. So guess what, man? When you did it with time management of the righteous, you did it in the process of, you go hide yourself. How you hide yourself, you hide yourself by being obedient to the word of the Most High God. That hidden is that protection. That hidden is that security that the Most High God gives you. Read on. But the simple pass on. But the simple do what? But the simple pass on. The simple is not going to take heed to what is written. The simple is not going to see that evil coming upon them. Read on. And are punished. And are what? And are punished. And that punish is going to lead to that destruction, man. And I'm going to share something with you, Israel. As you walking towards this righteousness, time management can be a big downfall. Because you look at what we're dealing with over here, man. We're being oppressed. A lot of us it's like it's like a revolving door, man. You pretty much get enough sleep just to get up and go back into captivity. You get enough food, enough money to pay your bills to do it all over again to what? Go back to the plantation. Go back to these jobs. So in the process of doing this, time management is very important because guess what? When we read in Daniel, it spoke and said he's gonna speak great words against the Most High. And he was going to work out the patience of the saints. This is what we have to, this is our counterattack, Israel. Get things in order. So, moving forward, give me Philippians chapter 4 and verse 8 right quick. Because when you're dealing with time management, we got to focus more on what's going to get us out of this captivity than what's keeping us in this captivity. 
A lot of our people that fed in love to what's keeping us in this captivity. Hey, I, you got a video for me over there? I'm going to come to it in a minute. Just find it for me. Because I'm going to show you, man, a lot of our people has invested their time in pretty much oppression. I'm going to tell you like this. It's hard to play a video game now knowing that I'm an Israelite, knowing that I'm in captivity. Knowing all these things make the things I used to do harder to do. Because guess what? I now know this is not my resting place. So, when I deal with my time management, and it's a day-to-day -day process, because guess what? We've been taught to do evil more than to do good. So, it's not going to happen overnight, Israel, but you got to program yourself to these things. You got to start managing yourself in these things. Because guess what? No matter what you're doing towards righteousness, we're still in captivity. Guess what? That, 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 that taskmaster that you work for don't want to hear that you was reading your Bible all night. That's why you're tired. Right. Don't want to hear you was uh, doing the will of the Most High on the Sabbath day. That's why your feet hurting. They don't want to hear that, man. So it's very important that we get things in order here, man. And when you get things in order, this is what you got to be focusing on. Read that right quick, Doug. This is the book of Philippians, chapter 4, verse 8. Uh -huh. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true. So whatsoever things that are true, man, read on. Whatsoever things are honest. Things that are honest, which we know what is true and honest, man. The oracle that was left for us, read on. Whatsoever things are just. Oh, what? Are just. Then are righteous, man. Read on. Whatsoever things are pure. Are pure, which we know God's words are pure, man. Read. Whatsoever things are lovely. Uh-huh. Whatsoever things are of good report. Wait a minute. That are what? Of good report. So now we dealing with this righteousness on a, uh, on a level that we got to be dealing with things that are, are of a good report. Managing your time, Israel, is something that we got to do day in and day out, man. It's so easy to to, to to pretty much get woke out when you when you don't have your day set in order. As you know who you are now, you got to start planning a whole lot better than what you were planning when you were just walking in the rudiments of this world, man. Finish that out up. If there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Do what? Think on these things. In the time of our being pretty much worn out the patient, we have to think of what we're doing this for. We have to think why we in this condition and what we need to do to get out this condition, man. But this is what our people like to do, man. You got a video for me? Yeah. All right, man. This is what our people This is what our people like to invest in. They're not understanding. There's no time management and being a pretty much a, a, a wicked, what I call Israelite. <laughs> we got to come in full effect with this, man. What you got for us? What you got? I'll say that. Yeah, we're crying and praying and stayed up for these things and not getting to make yourself do what's best. I didn't think it would help to let me go pay for myself. I didn't think it would help to let me go pay for myself. I didn't think it would help to let me go pay for myself. I didn't think it would help to let me go pay for myself. Yeah, and, and, and you talked about it, you, you know, on, on your show. You, you said that, like, you know, when. I would be a candidate to put it like give you like a hype. Production, I'm good, man. Look at that, man. God, God. Thought you had something for me, dog. That ain't what I want, man. God, love no, Strike two. All right, let's move forward with real, man. Um, give me John chapter 4, verse 24, man. I thought you was in the spirit over there. I thought you had something good. But this is what we got to do is as we walk. And, 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 and continue this walk, man. We got to get things in order. The only way we can do this, we got to be in this spirit of doing this, man. And I'm going to show you. Read that right quick, God. This is the book of St. John, chapter 4, verse 24. Yahweh is a spirit. Is a what? Is a spirit. Read on. And they that worship him. They that worship him. Understand this, bro. The words of the Most High God, they are spirits that quicken our soul. So they that worship him, read, must worship him in spirit. In what? In spirit. Read on. And in truth. So as we continue this walk, knowing that we're trying to get out this captivity, 
knowing we're trying to make it to our kingdom, we got to follow the power in spirit and in truth, man. And, and it's going to take time. But we got to make sure we manage our time wisely. So give me that. Let's go into uh, <clears throat> 1 Corinthians 4 and 40 right quick. Like I said before, Israel don't understand time management because of this precept right here. We have not been taught to do these things. We have not been taught that when you deal with the most high, man, you can't come as you are. You can't have it your way. It's a set structure to what we should be doing and how we should be abiding. Read that right quick, God. 14 and 40. Uh, 14 to 40. <laughs> this is the this is the uh, book of First Corinthians chapter fourteen verse forty. Uh huh. Let all things. What, read that again. <laughs> Let all things. So understand. Read. Be done decently and in order. Decently and in order. So in the process, Israel, getting our getting our path toward that righteousness, headed toward that righteousness, we have to be doing this, man. Decently and in order, man. So when we walk in this matter, <clears throat> go ahead and give me that in First Corinthians chapter 13 and 11. Because when you look at the situation and as we grow stronger in this truth, we have to realize, man, we there's a lot of ground we have to cover in a lot of short time. Because as we grow stronger in the knowledge of the truth, guess what? Our adversary is fighting to, to kill the truth. Our adversary is fighting to pretty much stop the whole process of us getting out of captivity. So when we operate like this, I'm going to show you something. We have to take this into consideration. First Corinthians. Yeah, 1 Corinthians 13 and 11. This is the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 11. When I was a child, when I was young in the faith, when I didn't know who I were, three, I spake as a child. We did what? I spake as a child. Read on. I understood as a child. We understood as a child. God loved everybody. <laughs> this is what we understood. Read on. I thought as a child. We even thought as a child, man. Well, you know, if the Lord, you know, it is what it is. The Lord bless us, you know, whatever. Not knowing that the most high God, I tell people all the time, we've been waiting on the most high, but the most high been waiting on us. That's right. To get ourselves together, man. We've been talking come as you are. But we know the truth now. He said, set your house in order, man. Get yourself together. Get yourself right. Cleanse yourself, man. Read on. I thought as a child, but when I became a man. Then we understand in the process of becoming a man, which you read in 1 Kings chapter 2, taking that choice, grabbing hold to what we should be doing, and setting everything in order, man. Read on. I put away childish things. We did what? I put away childish things. You got to put away childish things. You got to be walking in the light, man. You got to put away things that's not going to benefit us. So when you look at that understanding, go ahead and give me that in uh, Isaiah chapter. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 55 and verse 1 right quick. Because putting away childish things is a big part of time management toward that righteousness. Because you have to do the process of elimination. A lot of times people don't come into the truth because they don't want to eliminate that. They good in every aspect of everything they have going on in their life. They don't want to let go. But I'm going to show you something. Read that right quick up. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 55, verse 1. Ho, everyone that thirsts. Everyone that thirsts, read. Come ye to the waters. Come to the water, man. What is that water? This truth, man. Coming back to the oracles of the Most High God. Read on. And he that had no money. Uh-huh. Come ye. Uh-huh. Buy. Do what? Buy. Understand. Now, I know y'all get confused on that, but it's addressing that by me commit to this truth, man. Because it says, ye have no money. Come ye and buy. That means commit to this truth. Read on. And eat. And do what? And eat. Take this understanding in, man. Read on. Yea, come. 
buy wine and milk uh -huh. without money with, and without price. Without money or price, man. Understand, man. We've been taught the doctrine of the devil. We know now the most high God is requiring us to buy and pretty much commit yourself to this walk, this righteous walk, man. Read on. Wherefore, do ye spend money for that which is not bread? Understand, this is what we've been taught to do. I want to get more on that thirst right quick, God. Let me pretty say up there. Go ahead and give me uh, Matthew chapter uh, 5 and verse 6 right quick. Because I want you to understand this, bro. When he's telling us, commit yourself to what was written for us. Commit yourself towards obedience of, of God's will, man, for us. Get it with that thirst. Let's get some on there right quick. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 6. This is the book of St. Matthew, chapter 5, verse 6. Blessed are they which do hunger uh -huh. and thirst uh -huh. after righteousness. Whoa, whoa, read that again. After what? After righteousness. So this is what's going on, man, because a lot of times our people have this hunger and this thirst, but the most high God is addressing this hunger and this thirst must be after what? After righteousness. It got to be after the oracles of the Most High God. It got to be after these laws, statutes, commandments, man. Read on. For they shall be filled. For they shall be what? They shall be filled. So this goes back to what we read in Isaiah 55 and 1. Now let's go to Isaiah 55 and 2. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 55 and verse 2. Wherefore do ye spend money? Uh-huh. For that which is not bread. So this is what we've been trying to do, man. We spend and invest our time because, you know, they say time is money. Money is time. We spend and invest our time <clears throat> for things which is not bread. That bread we're talking about is things that's not going to lead to eternal life, man. Read on. And your labor for that which satisfied not. We labor in things that would not benefit us at all, Israel. We labor for things that is not going to get us to the kingdom. Read on. Hearken diligently. Do what? Hearken diligently. Read on. Unto me. This is the power of the dread. We got to hearken diligently. How we hearken diligently? Come to his word, man. Abide in his will. Read on. And eat ye that which is good. And do what? And eat ye that which is good. Read on. And let your soul delight itself in fatness. So this is what's going on, man. And we set the concept of time management. We got to be directing ourselves in the concept of righteousness, man. I'm going to show you something. Managing your time in which is good, man. Give me that in Galatians chapter 4 and verse 8 right quick. Because I'm going to show you something. A lot of times when we go off, I want to show you. Because this is one thing you got to realize about Satan. The adversary of God. His goal is not just for you to worship him instead of the most high God. In reality, his goal is to pull you away from the power. That's right. You can worship yourself. Satan is happy with that. You can worship your car. Satan is at a, at a point where his goal, yeah, he wants you to worship him, but not overall, his goal is to pull you away from the power. Because anytime you're away from the power, you're already in damnation. Read that right quick, God. This is the book of Galatians, chapter 4, verse 8. How be it then, when ye knew not your hour? How be it at the point when we knew not the power, we knew not the understanding of who we are and what we should be doing? Read. Ye did service unto them which by nature are no gods. And Christianity, Islam, all the things that we have pretty much uh, came across in our captivity, man. And even when we before we went into captivity, we didn't want to abide in his will, man. So these are things that happened to us, and this is what's pulling us away. Read on. But now, after that, ye have known Yahweh, or rather are known of Yahweh. Uh-huh. How turn ye again to the weak and beggarly elements? As we look at our people, man, they know they Israelites now, but they still continue in the ways of this world, man. Read on. 
whereunto ye desire again to be in bondage. And this is going to lead us, and I'm going to say this because we're still in captivity. This is going to prolong our captivity when our nation choose to do these things, man. When we choose, because I'm going to tell you this, when you choose to deal in bad time management, this is going to wear, wear us out as a nation. This is what's going to break us down as a nation because we're not putting on the whole arm. So let me show you something, Israel. Give me Colossians chapter 4 and 5 right quick. Because when you're dealing it and walking in that spirit and in truth, you got to get your every aspect of your life in order, man. And I shared it with you. It's not a one-time episode. It's not, okay, I got myself together, I'm good. It's a day-to-day -day process. St. Paul said, I die daily, man. That means he got to pretty much examine himself each and every day, man. Read that right quick, up. This is the book of Colossians, chapter 4, verse 5. Uh -huh. Walk in wisdom. Do what? Walk in wisdom. So this is what we got to do, man. When you're walking in wisdom, you understand the importance of managing your time. You understand the importance of being obedient and being diligent in this walk. Read off. Walk in wisdom toward them that are without. This is, this is us letting our light shine. To them that are without. We got to be that example, man. But guess what? If you don't have yourself in order, how can you be that example? I'm going to tell you, man, sometimes when we do these classes, man, these classes are double fold. As I teach, I, I learn. As I learn, I teach. You never stop learning, man. Read on. Redeeming the time. Doing what? Redeeming the time. Going back into redeeming the time, man. Preserving and, and watching in every aspect. Taking strong consideration of everything that's going on around us, man. Romans chapter 8 and verse 5. Because knowing this, knowing this here, Israel, you can't play games, man. You can't play games in this walk. I'm going to show you. Paul brought it out. I can't explain it no better than what he said. Read that right quick, guys. This is the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 5. For they that are after the flesh. For they that are after the flesh, read. Do mind the things of the flesh. Because when you realize now, man, your, your flesh have no desire to keep the commandments. Your flesh have no desire to try to do anything dealing with righteousness. Because guess what? Doing righteous in a wicked kingdom, man, is hard. Being obedient in a kingdom that say do what you like is hard on the flesh. That's why the most high requires us to stay in the spirit, walk in that wisdom. Read on. But they that are after the spirit, they that are after the spirit, they the one that pretty much suppress the flesh and feed the spirit. Read. The things of the spirit. Uh-huh. For to be carnally minded is death. For to be what? Is death. So to be carnal minded is death, man. For you to be living for your flesh, the lust of the world is death. Read on. But to be spiritually but, minded. But to be what? Spiritually minded. Abiding in these, which we know what is spiritual, these laws that you command. But read. Is life and peace. That's what we're seeking for, man. If you want, uh, 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 a man told me before, he said, uh, if you want peace, get yourself together. Get right with the most high. Get yourself in order. You want to continue that peace, learn how to time manage yourself. Learn how to do every aspect. And I think Bishop even say this too. You got to put every part of your life in order, man. Read on. Because the carnal mind is enmity against your house. It's pretty much an enemy to the power, man. Read on. For it is not subject to the law of God. But your flesh don't subject to this law, read. Neither indeed can be. So this is what we have to understand. As we walk, we got to understand this, Israel. John chapter 3 and verse 30 right quick. We got to continue this journey. We got to start managing our time a whole lot better. And I share this with y'all, uh, family. The ones that truly walking in this walk, man, Understand the adversary is seeing what's going on. He's doing everything in his will. If I I look at the job uh, now, a lot of jobs now, these men, your first interview, they tell you who's manager, so you got to work on Thursday. Right. Before you even say, how you doing? They're going to let you know, hey, we work on Thursday.
read there right quick. This is the book of John, chapter 3, verse 30. Uh-huh. He must increase. Understand, he must what? He must increase. As we continue to try to get ourselves together, the power within us, man, which is the most high in the sun, must do what? He must increase. Uh-huh. But I must decrease. This is what our people don't want to do, but we got to decrease, man. We have to pretty much bring ourselves to a lower state, man, so we can let the power work within us. And I'm going to tell you like this, dealing with the power, we got to put ourselves in order. We got to continue to press towards being obedient and put every aspect of our life in the order, man, in order, so we can continue to walk. <clears throat> Finish it up. That's it? Yeah, that's it. Give me Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 30 now. Because as you working in this <coughs> way of righteousness, try not to worry yourself out. You got to be, and then I, I think Bishop said, a lot of brews say it in one bite all the time, it's a thinking man game. If you choose not to think and be proactive, you're going to fall, little brother. So when we do this work, this is what we got to commit this work towards. And I always say this, it's bigger than us. Read that right quick, God. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 16, verse 30. Uh -huh. He shut his eyes to the vice. 16 and 3. Oh, 16 and 3, okay. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 16, and verse 3. Commit thy works. Do what? Commit thy work. Because as you walk in righteousness, this real, this is bigger than us. So Commit your work, Greek, unto the Lord. Uh huh. And thy thoughts shall be established. Read on. The Lord has made all things That's for all himself. That's all I want. So commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established, man. As we, as we understand, man, as we try to get out this captivity, as we feed our nation the biblical truth of the Bible, we got to be pretty much what the scriptures say in Matthew. We got to be sharp. As a serpent, man, but harmless as, as a dove, man, as we continue this walk. Give me that in Galatians, man. <clears throat> Matter of fact, let's give me 1 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 24. Because as we continue this walk, Israel, we we, we fighting for something. And we're fighting for that key to the kingdom. We're fighting for that salvation, which is that deliverance. But as we walk this walk, we got to manage our time. We got to understand this. Read that right quick up. This is the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 9, verse 24. Know ye not that they which run in a race. So understand, they that run in a race, read. Run all. Uh-huh. But one receiveth the prize. But one receiveth the prize. This is what I want you to understand. If we manage our time towards righteousness, this is going to get us out of this captivity. We got to know it's a price, it's a reward at the end, but we got to get ourselves in order. If we don't get ourselves in order, we're going to perish, man. Read on. So run that ye may obtain. Uh huh. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. So every man that striveth for the mastery, we got to go hard in what we do, man. We got to put every aspect towards the scripture into our everyday life, man. We're seeking that mastery. That mastery is what's going to get us out of this condition. Read on. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown. Uh-huh. But we and in incorruptible. People doing things in this world, doing it for a corruptible crown. But us being obedient, us going against the rudiments and the wickedness of this world, we doing it for that incorruptible, man. We doing it for the kingdom, man. We doing it to get out of this condition, man, and bring and rise back up the nation, man. <clears throat> Last precept, Israel. Go ahead and give me that in Luke chapter 12 and give me verse 36. Because the return of the Almighty, and when he come back for his, his, his chosen children, we got to get our house together. We got to get things in order, man. Luke chapter 12 and verse 36. This is the book of St. Luke, chapter 12, verse 36. And ye yourselves like 
unto man, uh -huh. unto men that wait for their Lord. So as we wait, man, we got to be getting ourselves in order. We got to be managing our time. We got to be putting things in order. We got to be walking toward that righteousness. Read. When he will return from the wedding, uh -huh. that when he cometh and knocketh, uh -huh. they might open unto him immediately. Because this is what Yahweh is doing, man. He's preparing us for that. We got to do our part as he continue to uh, be a perfect example for us. <clears throat> Read on. Blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching. So understand, blessed is going to be the ones that get what? Has managed their time wisely. Has been obedient to the word of the, the Most High God. Read on. Verily I say unto you, that he shall gird himself and make them to sit down to meet. Uh -huh. And will come forth and serve them. Uh -huh. Read on. And if he shall come in the second watch. In the what? In the second watch. Read on. Or come in the third watch. Uh-huh. And find them so. Blessed are those servants. So we don't know when he's coming, man. So when we bring out these classes, we bring them out because we got to feed our nation to get them to understand. We got to get everything in order in every aspect. Some of our people lacking because they're not managing their time wisely. If that's the case, this is what we need to do. We need to make sure we aim it towards managing that time toward righteousness, man. Making sure we pretty much get rid of the things that we that's not gonna lead us to salvation. Read on. And this note that if the good men of the house had known what hour the thief would come, uh huh, he would have watched. So we understand there's no shortcut in what we're doing, Israel. If we don't know the time of the day, so guess what? That means we got to stay on point. What it say? If you, if you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. Read on. And not have suffered his house to be broken through. Uh -huh. But ye therefore ready also. Uh -huh. For the Son of Man cometh at an hour when ye think not. And all they know, Israel, say shalom.